Fort Smith that Custer and his command have arrived. I've already done it. New orders, Washington put their man, Conant, in complete command of Operational Plan 763. Serious consequences if you fail to comply. Acknowledge, Terry. That sort of lays it on the line, don't it? Right on the line. Say, uh, ain't that long hair sort of a bother? I'm waiting for Crazy Horse to cut it. He promised to do it for nothing. that I'm to be in command of this mission? I have. Then we'll have no problems. No, not unless we run into hostiles and you don't know what to do about it. Oh, I'll know what to do about it. Have these boxes transferred to your wagon immediately. You're in command, Mr. Conant. Sergeant, you take your orders from Mr. Conant. Well, I'll be doggone. Sergeant. Bring those men over here. All right, you heard the man. Move. Be careful. Well, the ammunition weigh this much would be cannonballs. you helping? Mister, my contract with the government says I don't have to lift nothing heavier than this rifle. say so. Urgent she is. Here's a map. You'll follow the old Overland Trail to Medicine Creek. Do you mind if I make a suggestion? Not if it isn't unreasonable. Those boxes you value so highly stick out like sore thumbs. You might try covering them up. so much business since the work train plowed into a herd of buffalo. Send this. Yes, sir. General Terry Fort Smith. Your man Conant may be an incompetent fool. Prepare for serious consequences. Signed, Custer. I wouldn't send this if I was you. You're lucky. You're not me. Send it.
lead you to this point. And that's our destination. How many miles you figure? Oh, from here to there's about 80 miles as the crew flies. Of course, we ain't crows, so you can pack on another 10 or 15. You ever been over this trail before? Yeah, on a mule. But never one I had any wagons to worry about. Sure ain't good going like this trail we just come over. After you get beyond that ridge why it really gets rough, and it's a doggone dry that the coyotes pack can heat. Sergeant, mm. we'll take a four-hour rest here. Whoa. All right, this mob, make camp. Post sentry. When the stock's wanted and fed, have the men break out cold rations, get what rest they can. See to it, no one lights a fire. Yes, sir. Joe, let's take a look at that trail. Mr. Custer, what is the meaning of this? Any orders the colonel has given you are countermanded. We're moving on. We've been traveling all night, Mr. Conant. Much of it on the double. Inform the sergeant and your men as to who's in command of this mission, colonel. Sergeant, consider yourself informed. They'll obey you without too much trouble, Mr. Conant. I can't vouch for the amounts of mules. It's a rare breed of man who can make a mule take an unreasonable order. However, if you're of that breed, hop to it. Since you charted our route, I don't have to tell you there's little grass and no water from here on. Where are you going? First, to see if that trail's as bad as Joe says it is. And secondly, to see if Crazy Horse is preparing a little surprise party for us. This is Sioux held territory. We'll, uh, we'll wait here for you. Report back by noon. Sergeant, take over. All right. Full rations and no fires. Get any worse than this? Sure. You think that's bad? We got some trail ahead of us. It'll make this look like the road home. That was my coffee you kicked over. I gave orders for cold rations. The men ate cold rations, sir. The fire was lit on my orders. And over my protest. You have a gun, Sergeant. The next time Mr. Conan places my command in danger, use it. It is not your command. I thought that had been made plain to you. Not plain enough where the welfare of my men are concerned. You've already made two bad errors in judgment this morning. Out here, that's two more than you're allowed. We just scouted your trail ahead. I'm changing the route. You can't do that. Your orders are to take the Overland Trail. I'm doing it. We'll get back to the trail a mile to the north. Something's gone wrong. To change their route, we've got to attack them now. And lose a dozen of my warriors? You talk like a fool, Gray Fox. What's in them wagons is worth any price we pay. You are a white man, not a Sioux, except by marriage. Why should I believe what you say? I've proved my right to be trusted a hundred times over the past ten years. There's nothing for me in the white man's world, except maybe the end of a rope. You are certain about what those wagons contain? Dead certain, like I told you. I have decided. We're going to attack. Yes. But not here. And not now. Anybody that could get wagons through down yonder, it'd be a cinch bet to walk on water. Well, I had to be sure. It could have saved us 10 miles. Not unless them wagons could sprout wings. You know, General, you sure do take an awful lot of convincing. Well, this proves I can be convinced. 
We've cut back to the Overland Trail. How did you get yourself into this mess, Morgan? I followed orders, sir. Can't you read a map, Mr. Conant? The crossing is two miles up. The road continues right through here. I saw no reason to go two miles out of the way. Now you see the reason. Get that wagon unloaded, Sergeant. I forbid it, Custer. Get those boxes out of there. Sergeant, don't touch those boxes. All right, untie the ropes. It's all loaded. Do you want to count them? Six full boxes of rifle cartridges, Sergeant. <laughs> rifle cartridges? Yes, sir. Well, we'll trade you double our cartridges for the kind you got in those boxes. Mr. Conan, my men aren't blind or stupid. You might as well let them in on it. I'll do no such thing. And I forbid you to say one word. I'll grant no man the right to silence me. Men, there's something I want you all to hear. Now, I know you've been wondering what's in those ordnance boxes. Well, now you know. We're guarding a wagon load of gold. Custer, I want you to keep your mouth shut. Mr. Conan doesn't trust you. Now, but it was whiskey in this wagon. I wouldn't trust you either. <laughs> it's part of the money our government is paying the Russians for the purchase of Alaska. We have been given the dubious honor of delivering it to the west terminal of the Transcontinental Railway. One thing, there will be no souvenir taking. <laughs> Any questions? Yep, just one, General. How long are we gonna stand around here jawing about it? Sergeant, prepare to move them out. Custer. Do you know the penalty for insubordination? I should. Climb aboard that wagon. From now on, I'm giving the orders. You can't do that. But Mr. Conant, I'm doing it. You can address your complaints to General Terry after the mission is completed. Climb aboard. star. Now, if I could just find my pack mule. Let's not tax the power of prayer or your luck any further. As the good book says, count your blessings. Yeah, yeah. Were they Sue? Oh, brother, things were happening so fast. I wasn't worried about what breed I'd run into. By the way, Colonel, my name's Bledsoe. Custer. Oh, Custer, huh? Well, the only Custer I ever heard of was a, was a general. Uh, well, I started at the top. I'm working my way down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, 
I don't suppose it's too much to hope that you're working your way west. Fort Bridge is a long way away. But if you're not, maybe you could spare me a pack mule. Well, it's a bad country to be traveling alone. We're heading west. Better come along with us. Thank you, Colonel. Thank you very much. Oh, Colonel. The, uh, the direction you're heading in, you wouldn't be following the old Overland Trail, would you? Because if you are, you got nothing but trouble ahead for you. Why? Well, I come that way. The last two days, ran headlong into Crazy Horse and a bunch of his braves. Did you estimate the size of the war party? Oh, must have been a hundred, I guess. But enough to take care of your troop, that's for sure. We have an alternate route, Joe? We can swing north through Lost Canyon. All right, that's the way we'll go. Sergeant, we'll make camp here tonight. You and California Joe have a look around. Any sign of hostiles? No, but that trail to Lost Canyons is about as hostile as you ever saw. We'd be better off we as mountain goats. No way to get through. Oh, we can get through all right, but I sure don't like the looks of it. It's about the prettiest spot I ever seen for a bushwhacking. Here. I see this spot here on the trail. Well, that's where the trail runs into this big bluff here. So we have to swing north through Lost Canyon. Now down in through here is a dry creek. After we get across that, why, well, it's a piece of cake alongside of what we've already been over. Handful of Indians with some guns could sure warm that canyon up for us all. Saddle for a while. Get the water, I'm spitting cotton. Take it easy. That might have to last us for a while. I sure hope we got enough to get across this stretch. Thanks to the Colonel, we'll have plenty. Plenty of water? Plenty of ammunition, too, I suppose. This wagon full. Not counting the 40 rounds that the troopers carry. So. Do you mind if I sprawl out in the back? I got more aches and pains than you could possibly count. sun is right above, Yellow Hair will enter Lost Canyon. He will send a scout to look for us, but he will not find us. He's sure telling the world what he thinks about it, ain't he? He can count himself lucky. How you figure, General? Well, no orders to take. More or less master of his own destiny. And no responsibility to anyone but himself. You know, I never thought about it just like that. 
you might have something there. Still, I never seen one that wasn't about half starved. There's so dead blame contrary that they just can't even tolerate one another. You remind me of something that Sergeant Bustard said about you. I'll bet it wasn't any good, whatever it was. General, you still dead set on a riding through Lost Canyon? Not if you know a better way. I sure wish I did. Now, we better turn in. I'd like to get an early start tomorrow. <laughs> Change the route we planned. That fool Custer insisted on doing it. I couldn't force the issue for fear he'd be suspicious. Oh, you're afraid of shadows. I'm afraid of nothing. But there's two million dollars of gold at stake. And you'll be glad to know I figured out the trail Custer's taken. Crazy horse knows? Yes. Where? Where will it happen? <laughs> <laughs> Delay. Well, we rid through it. Indians? Seen a lot of tracks down there, but didn't see hiding a hair of an Indian. Then let's get going. Air up yonder someplace, I can smell them. You gonna listen to that? Strikes me you're pushing mighty hard, Mr. Conant. And with due course, Custer. The responsibility of this gold is mine. All right, Sergeant, we're going through. Move them out. Yes, sir. We made it. Yeah, I think old Crazy Horse missed the boat. But we'll never in our whole life ride to a better place than that for an ambush. Sergeant, let's keep it moving. Oh, Be 
that Sioux war party. I told you I've seen at least a hundred of them. What's keeping them? It's a crazy horse to think he's got something up his sleeve. We got enough water for men and horses for three days. What is your responsibility, Sergeant? Yes, sir. If somebody ought to try to get through to General Terry. I'm sure it would please him to know that the odds against us is only 10 to 1. I'll go. If your scout will go with me. The two of us might get through. Do you know this area? I've been back and forth across this country at least a dozen times. Now, you save my skin. Maybe it's my turn to help you save yours. That is, if your scout wants company. Well, I'd be happy to have you along. Man can sure get lonesome out yonder all by himself. Hey, Sue! It's crazy, horse. I want to talk with you. The hills are filled with my warriors, Yellow Hair. And I'm surprised to see the great chief Crazy Horse under the protection of the white flag. It is there so I could talk to your men. They can hear you. I want the gold to buy arms, ammunition, and supplies. If they put down their guns, I will allow them to return to Fort Smith. No other conditions? One. They must surrender you to me. You refuse my terms? Wouldn't you? you want me to tell General Perry? Only that we'd pinned down by Crazy Horse. If he wants a relief column, tell him to keep his eyes open. He won't have to, because I'll be leading that relief column myself. Good luck. Thanks a lot, General. Take care of yourself. But they, they took him. What'd you leave him for? Oh. Well, now, you ain't exactly the companionship I'd be a-craving if I was left to my own choosing, crazy horse. You will not be thinking of amusing things to say for long, Scout. Oh, I don't know about that. 
Right now I'm thinking about my chances of meeting up with you down in the hot place, and it amuses me quite a lot. Perhaps I will give you a taste of that hot place before you die. Yeah, and I'll bet you'll give her a try to, you red heathen, you. Go ahead. Shoot your best shot. There is time. First, I intend to see if I can make a trade. One small muskrat. Or the pelt of a broad-tailed beaver. Hey, I pull. Yellow hair, surrender yourself and the wagons to me, and I will free your friend. You give me very little choice, crazy horse. How much time do I have to make this decision? This far I will go. The scout will not be harmed until the moon is gone. Then if you refuse my offer, he will die. You have heard my words. Yours would like nothing better. Cassidy, I'm going to ask you to risk your neck. You can say no and I'll understand. Well, I wouldn't understand if you refused to risk yours, Colonel. So shoot. It means trying to sneak out of here. You may end up where Joe is. There's too much better in here. Mm -hmm. You come with me. You going after your scout? Count me in. Sergeant, you take over here. If anything happens to me, get these weapons. for your decision. It has been made. Yellow hair has been relieved of his command. We will surrender him to you, along with the arms and the wagons, but under one condition, that you prove to us that the man you have taken prisoner is alive and will be freed. As you see, he lives. Bring him here. Prove to me that yellow hair no longer leads you. All right, Conan, it's up to you. Up to me? Prove to that suspicious Indian that we mean what we say. Give me one reason why I should. Custis Scout means nothing to me does to me. So move out. Right here behind you. 
You think I betray my mission? Well, I know nothing about that, Mr. Conant. But this thing sticking you in the back is my pistol. So sing out. Crazy horse. My name is Ben Conant. I'm from the State Department. This mission is now under my command. Only if you meet me alone will I believe you. Return to camp. The only thing I know about you is that you're a pain in the... begging your pardon. Anyways, Colonel Custer has his own ideas on a little chit-chat with that Indian. Tell him you think it'd be better if he talked to a soldier. Get ready to fight. me fool california making out that you were so much smarter than those indians well i didn't plan on being jumped by no dad blame renegade you mean bledsoe yeah that fella turned out to be a more coyote than crazy horse himself leastways crazy horse will meet a man head on well what happened to bledsoe i mean i killed him mr conant i'm gonna try to make that up to you general if i live long enough I lost you, Joe. Who do I have to blame for getting us into a situation like this? Yellow hair has answered us. When the sun is full, we will attack. Mr. Conant. What are you planning to do? Well, the next move belongs to Crazy Horse. If it'll ease your mind any, the Plains Indians usually won't make a stand-up fight. They prefer to hit and run. Behind these wagons, we can make every attack a costly one for Crazy Horse. We can hold this position for quite a while if necessary. But I don't think the Indians will fight that long, not even with crazy horse behind them. I see. Thanks. California's resting like a baby, sir. Never thought I'd see the day that he'd be shook up. It's the first time for everything, Sergeant. Including getting ourselves whipped by the Indians. <laughs> and this may be the time, seeing as how we're so badly outnumbered. We've been outnumbered before. <laughs> yes, sir. But we always had a trick up our sleeves. That sun will be popping up in a minute. And you know what that means. How much powder do we have? Five barrels. Fifty pounds each. Break them out. Now? Now. Yes, sir. Make sure you set these cakes far enough away from the wagons.
Cooper, cut that powder trail. That didn't look like an accident, Mr. Conant. It was deliberate. Now. Let him go. Generals get in his range. All right. Back to your post. Mr. Conan, I think it's time we had a little talk. You can't win, Custer. Your only chance is to surrender to me. Surrender? I don't know the meaning of that word. And if we die, you die with us. There's no need for any of us to die. Give us that gold. Crazy Horse City, let all your men go. I know what Crazy Horse said. I want to know about you. Were you in on this with Bledsoe? Yes. I knew him before. And when I found out about the gold, I got in touch with him again. He arranged the details with Crazy Horse, the trap here. We were going to split the gold. They were to get half to buy guns. I was to keep the rest. Looks like we got another little problem on our hands, General. Sergeant, tie him up. Hold your fire. Steady. I suppose there's any chance he wants to talk some more. I doubt it, Joe. Well, now, would you look at that? And that. Now, what are they stopping for? Maybe they saw us with that powder. Nah, he's just trying to impress us with all the braves he's got on his side. Get ready. Here they come. Will you fire? Now!
charge here? I am, sir. Second Lieutenant Cooper. That is, Lieutenant. What is the next official train doing? By, uh, day after next, I think. Never think, Lieutenant. One thing. Before I start sleeping until that next train arrives. Yes, sir. I want a receipt for the contents of this wagon. Well, do you think that'll be necessary, sir? Since I want you to do my worrying for me, it is. And just what does this property consist of, Colonel? Two million dollars in gold, Lieutenant. Two million dollars in... And it's all yours till I wake up. About 30 hours from now. Couldn't shave me. kill him at that distance. And I sure don't look forward to going after no wounded grizzly. Be kind to be near California. Uh, no, only bruised it. But did it get him? You hit him, all right. Ah, oh, only wounded him. Huh? Well, got to go after him. Can't leave him so far. California, you keep an eye on Mr. Keogh. I'll track him. And you stay put. You've done enough for one day. I'll circle around that way and try and grab him back toward you. Ah, oh, and here I was thinking you were trying to grab all the pleasure for yourself. General, we've snuck in pretty close to Blackfoot country. It's right over the ridge on her. Don't suppose they heard that shot, do you? I can't be sure. But I'll keep my eyes open for them, and you keep your eye on me. Throw me the rifle, would you, General? Yeah, I'll get it. Hey, you back in your California. Blackfoot war party. 
me how it'd take the whole regiment two weeks to dig out that pile of rocks. Then I'll come back with the regiment. Well, we'll see what General Perry says about it. I'll come back and I'll find him. Nick, we better start making some tracks out of here. and the Blackfoot are enemies again. It'd be mighty inconvenient if all you fellows ever got together. There's not much danger in that, though, is there? How'd they get you? You are a fool. Am I? You could have counted on them to do it for you. Do what? Remove my spirit. Kill you? That's not why I'm here, Crazy Horse. Then why? I want you alive. You're the most important hostage I could have. And you're going to be my passport through Sioux country back to Fort Hayes. You are still a fool. Maybe. How'd they get you? These feeble old women and children. man, if you are a man, what do they call you? Pale shadow? Empty spirit? 
fearless dove. <laughs> Is your name among those? Tell me, is it your custom to have prisoners guarded by women? Careful. Do not speak to them harshly. Or they will run weeping to their mothers. Or beg their elders to protect them. We are men. We need help from no one. We have killed bluecoats by the hundreds. Where? In the safety and comfort of your lodges? I could crush the both of you with my two fingers. Make you scream with pain like unweaned children. Then do it. My hands are tied. Is it to keep you from twisting off your nose? Watch your mouth. Oh, there's no reason to be afraid. Afraid? Me? I'd never dream of hurting a woman. I am a man. So you say. So you say. But while the men... We have been on the warpath for many days, sleep in their lodges. The women and children are allowed to play at being braves. You don't think I could kill you? I think you could aim that rifle at my head and shoot off your foot. No, no. If you'd be good enough to cut my other hand free... We'll dress him like a squaw. to make you my prisoner. You don't hear me complaining. You expect to charge any minute. All right. Make a run for it together.
So you thought you'd take the regiment back up there on maneuvers, did you? And then, as long as you happen to be in the area, you might try to recover his body. Well, isn't that what you had in mind? Well, yes, sir. I feel I owe him at least a proper burial. Why didn't you say so in the first place? Well, because I didn't think you'd let me, sir. You thought correctly. For all of his faults, which were legion, I'm just as sorry to lose Custer as you are. Maybe more so. There were hundreds of times when I wished him in Hades, but there never was a time when I didn't respect him as a fighting man. But you won't let me look for him, will you? And maybe, or just maybe, if he were still alive, I'd let you go look for him. But to take a risk of that magnitude merely for the sake of a proper burial... Is it really such a risk, sir? That canyon is right on the edge of Blackfoot country. Here. It's right here. There. Our little hunting party is one thing. But to get that close to their land in full regimental strength, what might not only be an invitation to open warfare, but might also have the highly undesirable side effect of uniting two deadly enemies, the Sioux and the Blackfeet. And you wouldn't take a chance like that for Custer? I wouldn't take that kind of a risk for any man alive, with the possible exception of Custer, if he were still alive. But, sir, dismissed. Yes, sir. Well, too risky. Might start a war. Might stop the Blackfoot and the Sioux fighting each other and gang up on us. You know he's right. Well, maybe you're willing to take his no for an answer, but I'm not. I think he means it. Well, are you well enough to move on? Where? I thought I mentioned it last night. I'm taking you in with me. I will not be your captive. You will be mine. Well, I'd say that's open for debate. Wouldn't you? I do not fight with words. I know you don't. But until we're out of Blackfoot country, defend yourself. means no winner and no loser. 
And who is, who is prisoner? And who is master? Neither one. Until we get out of the Blackfoot country, we stick together. Why together? We stand a better chance together than alone. You know that as well as I. Until we cross the Rosebud River, we help each other? To the best of our abilities. And after we get across, we return to the more comfortable state of being mortal enemies. I accept that. I will try it. Let's go on patrol tomorrow, around the Rosebud. It's about time. You know, some of them Sioux's been a poking around down there a whole lot lately. Like they lost something. Crazy horses, people. You know, that's a funny thing. I just can't rightly figure it out. Crazy horse is a lot smarter than to go fiddling around that close to home unless he's got an awful good reason. Oh, well, it'd not be them I'd be interested in. They're no threat to us at the moment, only a nuisance. Oh? Then what are we going down there for? Well, I got a feeling. Now, it's just a feeling, mind you, that the general would not be too surprised if we sort of got uh, lost and took a good look at that canyon where we left Custer. I thought General Terry told you that he didn't want you going near that place. Only with the regiment. Uh, his orders, as far as I can tell, did not include a puny, inoffensive little patrol of 10 or 12 men. You know what? You're fixing to get you and me in a whole pack of trouble, that's what. Well, if the prospect of that frightens you, I'd not be wanting you to come along if you'd not want to go. Who said I didn't want to go anyhow? Like a cavalry trooper, crazy horse. Custom to getting blisters everywhere but on his feet. A Sioux warrior does not walk on the ground like a squaw. I stole my first horse from a fur trader when I was ten summers old. Wish he hadn't lost a knack. Could do with a couple ponies right now. Not to mention something to eat. Eat? No, thanks. Hmm. White men eat raw oysters, cook frogs, but grow pale about eating worms. You have strange ways, yellow hair. From your point of view, I agree. On the other hand,
claim this land, Yellow Hair. Tell him about the white man's might. Tell him how you will conquer his land. Go on, Yellow Hair. Tell him about the white man's ways. Thanks for your help. His scalp and a plugged nickel. Now you shut your mouth, Indian lover. We ain't about to let you live any longer than him. Find much gold along here? Ain't complaining. The cavalry's been scouting this area for some time. How'd they happen to miss you? You a horse soldier, ain't you? That's right. How brave as you are! What are you doing with a redskin for a partner? I'm Colonel Custer of the 7th Cavalry. Custer? That's right, and this man's my prisoner. And in case you're not aware of it, if you're caught panning for gold in this river, it'll cost you 20 years. Well, I'll tell you something, Mr. Custer. Have we caught any place at all? We ain't gonna get nothing but a rope. Killing two more ain't gonna cause us to get any closer to a hemp necktie than we've been all along. Let's get it over with then. Cavalry's not all you've got to worry about. There's a party of Blackfeet that's been chasing us for two days. They're not far behind. Well, now, thank you, Mr. Custer, for the warning. We'll be moving along then. Right after we square you two. I am taking no scalps until the time comes to take yours. <laughs> Died for this yellow dust. You did not try to stop me. I thought any white man held gold higher than honor, higher than life itself. Not wrong. Very badly. Yes. What did you do to them? Whatever it is a man does to his enemies. And us? What makes us enemies? The colors of our skin? Yours is hardly darker than mine. You have said enough. I'm beginning to understand that story about you. What story? That's probably just a rumor, but since you asked... It's been suggested that you were born of white parents. Yellow hair. Don't you ever say such a thing to me again. What do you suggest? We lay low or keep moving? Keep moving until we cross that river. And we can be enemies again. Oh, la la su. I told you they was a poking around where they didn't have no business. What are they doing in these parts? Black feet catch them, they'll be roasted on a slow fire. They're looking for trout. Just like they'd lost somebody. You don't suppose. No, 
I know. What? They're looking for Custer. No, nah, the general's dead. And yet he just might, by some wondrous turn of fate. Nah, forget it. The general's dead. Arsenic. What? A deadly poison. Poison in some mineral up in the spring. If you drink that, you die. You speak the truth. For you. But my people have learned to drink bitter water. The white man made it necessary. It's remarkable what the human body can get used to. Not all things. Not slavery. I fought against slavery, Crazy Horse. During your civil war? And now you fight for it? You're wrong. You don't want to enslave your people. You know that. I have heard those same words spoken by your Indian commissioners. And they lied. They tried to take from us everything that we have known. And try to make us over in the image of themselves. Is your way of life so fine, so great, that no other should exist? If I were a philosopher, I might have an answer for you, crazy horse. But I haven't. But this I do know. Our country will be great someday, but only if it has a chance to grow. Time always brings changes. No people can stand still without progress. They die, as many ancient civilizations have died before us. You may speak truth, Yellow Hair, but it does not make the love of our people for their way of life any lesser. You really do not understand us. You cannot see the beauty we see. You cannot feel the emotions we have. But we are all human. And we can learn to live together in peace. Has the white men lived together in peace? Not many years ago, you fought a war against the Mexicans. Then another. The greatest of all wars against your own people. 
When the white men can live together in peace, then you can come to us and ask that we join in that peace. Every nation must earn the right to exist. Since nothing is ever given, it must be taken. As you try to take the lands of the Sioux? And how did the Oglala Sioux get these lands? Were they given to them through the workings of some great medicine? No. The Oglala came from the east, up in Minnesota. At a time your old men still remember. With war lance and bow, they drove out the people who were here before them. Yurikara, Crow, Cree, Ponca, even the mighty Cheyenne bowed to the great force of the Sioux Nation. And now it's the turn of the Sioux to feel the might of a stronger people. And if they choose to resist through means of war, they'll be destroyed. We'll be making compere tonight. Tomorrow morning we can be scouted. I guess the general was right after all. We've come a bit close. I'm thinking we'd best to be moving out. you call the Rosebud. Once we are on the other side, the Blackfoot will not dare to follow. Then we are free to be enemies again. Yes, I know. you take this round. I do not wish to kill you now. You have more value alive. That's the finest compliment I've had all day. You Yakapo.
on tap for tomorrow, Captain? We're going to look for the colonel's body? Nope. The general was right all along. All we've done is stir up a hornet's nest to no good purpose whatsoever. And tomorrow? Back to Fort Hayes. You're giving up. I'm facing facts, man. I should have given up days ago. Sue or a Blackfoot. This lesson would be quite wasted on you. Never let me catch you falling asleep on guard duty again. Yes, sir. Now pick up that weapon and look sharp. Yes, sir. Give me some boots, a pistol, and a horse. Yes. Move. Trooper Reel, what are you doing away from your post? Well, sir, I'm standing guard duty over there and just... But speak up, man. Well, it's Colonel Custer, sir. I'm going to get him some gear. Sure. It is a shabby looking one you are. Is it you then? Well, what happened to you, General? Save the questions, Mr. Keogh. We're moving out on the double. Yeah, but the men have been 48 hours without sleep, sir. 48 hours, is that all? The moment I'm gone, you start pampering them. Colonel Custer. James B., have the men ready to move in two minutes. Yes, sir. Rio told me you were alive. Thought you were dead. Happy to see you back. What are you waiting for, Sergeant? Get those men moving. Yes, sir. Two hours ago, I was the prisoner of Crazy Horse. If we hurry, we may still be able to catch them. How many and how big a start do they have? Eight or ten men, about 20 minutes ride. Oh, no more than that. The day before, he was accompanied by only one man. Me. Hey, come on, Mr. Keogh. What are you waiting for? Welcome back, General. We may never have another chance to catch Crazy Horse. Hey, General! Would you mind telling me what's going on around here? Fight them on foot. Enough, Bob. Enough. advantage of close combat. Let's show them, lads. Charge!
prisoners? No prisoners, General. You better tend to the wounded. Aye, sir. You're looking for Crazy Horse, sir. I'm afraid he got away. I understand you spent some time with him. What's he like? What's he like? Impossible. Disappointed, General? Yes. Surprised? No. He always manages to slip away. All right. You'll be meeting again. I'm sure of that. Aye, and then you'll know more about the way his mind works and all. That's true. And vice versa. chưa được tổ chức như thế nhưng mà công nhận đi mình cũng ý là không muốn tổ chức vành ràng to như thế tổ tiền có mình ăn ấy thì cứ ăn uống chứ không muốn tổ chức vành ràng tốn tiền chỉ là bây giờ tổ chức sinh nhật mười mấy triệu điền nhỏ Ông là mình đã thấy tốn tiền rồi đúng không? Như, như đúng như thằng hồn mà nói đúng đấy đã ấy là phải biết tiết kiệm tiền đúng đấy kiểu mình tiêu thế mình cũng thấy nhiều tiền đấy bao nhiêu tiền là thì do á à, nhưng mà vợ chồng khác thì người yêu nhưng mà đúng là người yêu là biết tiết kiệm tiền không biết có linh nào có biết nói cái câu là ví dụ anh sao mà anh phải tổ chức kiểu như thế này nhỉ? 